All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I see that some of you guys are probably starting to pop in here as we've just now started the broadcast recording. Uh, we'll wait a few minutes and let other people join in. Uh, also, in case I probably started talking too soon, but we'll wait a minute or two before we get started. I've got a presentation uh, with some slideshows to show you guys and a couple different times during this broadcast. We will take a break and I'll see if you guys have any questions. If anybody has raised their hand or if anybody has typed something into the chat feature to ask a question, or you can just unmute yourself, I think. Not a that uh, practice with the blue jeans event, but um, I imagine that you guys will figure out some way to get your questions to me. Okay. Now, already I see there's one unread question. So, um, as we go along here, I'll introduce myself in a moment, but we'll wait another minute or two to let additional people uh, come in and join us. All right. And this is where, if we were all together, we'd be awkwardly looking at each other like, yep. So we're waiting. So we're up to 29 now. Uh, open to break 50. Kind of my goal. Let's go for that. All right. Let me be polite and turn my phone off so that we don't get interrupted by that. All right, so we're kind of stuck at 20. Oh, 32. Hey, we're moving up in the world. All right. So, like I said, we'll get started here in just a moment. So, Anne, you're asking if you are torn between certain engineering programs, are there some more competitive? I'm not sure I fully understand the question, meaning are there some that are harder to get into? Or do you mean that there are some that uh, provide a better value or easier to find a job? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm understanding the question there, Anne. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so I think you know, yes, some harder to get into. The way it works for Georgia Tech uh, is at the undergraduate level, Georgia Tech, big administration, there's a, a large admissions team that reviews all of the applications for any of the programs. We in industrial system engineering or in mechanical engineering or civil or computer science. Uh, we don't see those undergraduate applications. They're all handled by one central group who looks at every application, reads the essays, goes through all of the application materials in order to look for what would make a good Georgia Tech student. Don't look at it and say, well, this particular student might be a good IE student, or this particular student would be a terrible mechanical engineering student, or IE is really full, or mechanical engineering needs more people, so we'll accept more of them. They actually look holistically at the whole application for a good Georgia Tech student, because once you're accepted, you're accepted into Georgia Tech, you can change your major. And I thought industrial engineering was for me. But uh, now I've come to find out that I really enjoy uh, civil engineering instead. And so you will have that ability to change your major once you're in. So the big umbrella admissions group, if you will, 
are the ones who look at all of those applications to find a good Georgia Tech student. Uh, and as far as whether it's harder for girls to apply as industrial engineering, I don't think so. What you're going to see as part of my presentation is that industrial engineering, in addition to being awesome, uh, is one of the more evenly split engineering in terms of gender. Okay. Um, could you go over the co-op opportunity career fair at the School of Engineering, especially? Um, we'll see what my presentation covers, you think. Okay. Um, I may answer that question as part of the presentation. So we're up to 36 people now. We're getting there. But I think I need to probably go ahead and get started um, because some of these questions are um, going to be answered as part of that presentation. Okay. So, uh, Julio, or Julio, man, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, I think I'm going to answer that one as part of my presentation. Okay. So I'm going to share my. PowerPoint presentation screen with you guys. Now I'll introduce myself. Let me get to that point and share. Okay, so hopefully you guys are all seeing Buzz with his hands wide spread open. Welcome to Georgia Tech. Welcome to the college, uh, to the School of Industrial and Systems Engineering and the College of Engineering. Uh, my name is Dr. John Lowe. I am one of the faculty members here. Um, just to make sure, I'm gonna stop sharing and make sure that uh, you guys are seeing me okay. So, okay, all right. I'm presuming that you can. So, all right, so I'll start, I'll share the screen again. And what you guys are going to probably quickly realize is that I'm an industrial engineer, not a TV star, nor do I play one on TV. And unfortunately, now it seems like my Chrome is um, locked up. Let's try something here. Hmm. I apologize. If you are still hearing me, I apologize. Uh, looks like there are some technical difficulties, right? Uh, let's wait and see if Chrome responds here. And then I may have to come back out and come back in. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. So I apologize. In Georgia Tech, right? We should have not have these technical difficulties at times. Close program. Hey everyone, just bear with us for a few minutes. Dr. Lowe is just gonna log out and re-log back in to make sure she he's able to share his screen with you so you can see your pre the presentation and we'll get started in just a few minutes. Thanks so much and just bear with us for another minute or two. So I'm sorry, uh, Chrome locked up on me. So um, I don't know if they're going to be invited automatically back in, Andrew, or I can't. I can't. You're good you... To go. you are good to go. You can keep on going. Let's see if you can share your screen again and start off the presentation. Okay. But everyone is All still right. here. Everyone is still here. Okay, thank you. And for those of you who are overhearing us, I apologize. I had some. So let's try this one more time and see if it'll work out right. Share my screen. PowerPoint slideshow share. And all right, I'm trusting that you guys can see this okay. So you are good to go. Yeah. Marvelous. Thank you, sir. So again, my name is Dr. John Lowe. 
This is the H. Milton Stewart School of Industrial Systems Engineering. And what I'm going to talk with you guys about today is I'm going to start with a little bit of the background on industrial engineering and talk a little bit about how we at Georgia Tech um, help you guys learn that material. And this first slide here asks if you're an industrial engineer at heart. If you see an issue, if you see a problem with either one of these two pictures. On the left-hand side there, we see people waiting in line at the Burger King. Is that a problem? Do you see a problem there? If we were in real life doing this, right, um, I would solicit some answers from you guys. But if you're the owner of that Burger King, and you see these people getting into that line and not leaving because they really like Burger King onion rings. Um, you're actually kind of thinking you're doing okay, right? You might not have the happiest customers, but you're probably thinking I'm kind of doing the most with the least. And so as that owner of that Burger King, you would probably want to know that before you add any employees, which would be one way to potentially fix this, right? Now add some employees, add some resources in order to get your customers in and out faster. As the owner though, you would probably want to know, you're going to generate enough additional business to help pay for that employee. Because right now you're doing, on the right hand side there, uh, we see sort of a similar situation where our demand has outstripped our supply. And for those of you in the Atlanta area, you might appreciate this one. I make a silly joke that this picture was taken just before, just after snow was forecast for the Atlanta area because the Atlanta area is notorious for having well bad traffic, but also for even the mention of the word. So people run out and buy milk, bread, and eggs, right? So I know it's a bad joke. Not the last one I'm going to do, though, okay? So I feel bad for you all. But this is a similar situation where our demand has outstripped our supply. Both of these situations you will learn about at Georgia Tech in terms of, particularly with the bare shelves there, there's a very elegant equation that looks at the demand for that product such that you know how much you should have on those shelves such that you don't run out but then also that you're not crowding out other products okay so what is industrial engineering industrial systems engineer or professional organization and they define it this way college board defines it just a little bit differently but what I like to point out is both of them use people. Both of them have people as part of that definition. And that's what I think distinguishes industrial engineering from some of the other engineering disciplines is that we need to be able to work with people. We actually desire working with people. Something that I didn't fully realize until this COVID-19 situation and how much I miss being able to talk to people, right? So one of the things that you have to be able to do and probably would enjoy doing is be able to talk to the people on the shop floor who are doing the real work. And then be able to translate that information to upper management who just thinks they're doing work. And then be able to take the vision of upper management and translate that down to what the actual workers need to do. And I think that's what uh, makes us a little bit different from the other engineering disciplines. And I'll go talk real briefly about these application examples because I've got some other examples too to talk about, but supply chain manufacturing are really our, are really our bread and butter. Uh, that's where we're bringing our raw materials in, working them, and then sending those finished goods out. Health systems never, has that been more in the forefront than over these last months, right? A lot of what industrial does is make the most efficient use of limited resources. Well, then this COVID-19 situation that we're in, this pandemic, 
that's never been more evident, right? Uh, one of the ideas behind shutting down uh, economies and businesses and, and flattening the curve, they called it, was to make the efficient use of our limited hospital and healthcare resources. And then the entertainment, eh, that, that, I probably should switch that order nowadays, right? But entertainment, Atlanta and Georgia is becoming more and more well known for working with the film and TV industry. And again, the most efficient use of limited resources. How can we make the best use of the cameramen, of the, the sound people, of our actors, right? So, which I probably should switch those two, right? Uh, at least in the current environment. So this is a visual of Ford's spare parts supply chain. Think of all the different cars, all the different models that Ford produces over the years. And each one of those little purple dots represents a demand point. Um, and the group of auto zones or Walmart or O'Reilly's, some places that you would go to get those parts. The blue squares represent warehouses huge buildings with shelves and shelves of these products and then in those two yellow diamonds i'm going to produce those parts for all of these different cars for all the different uses that ford would have for them. how can ford appropriately distribute all of those parts across all of those different locations including the blue warehouses the distribution center such that when you go into that O'Reilly or when you go into that AutoZone, they have the oil filter that you need for your particular Ford car. But not so many of them that some of them are collecting dust, right? So that we don't have that overstock, but then we don't have that understock situation like we saw in the earlier picture. Or to put this maybe into terms that, that you younger people, because I'm not one of you, uh, one that the, the younger people would understand is Instagram and Instagram stories. Okay, maybe think of each one of the purple circles there as groups of Instagram users. And you, as an Instagram user, want to be able to upload your stories or download and view someone else's story without having to wait too long. So maybe Instagram is trying to determine where should I put and how many servers should I put in the blue squares such that you don't have to wait too long. We obviously don't want to put too many servers there because that's really not an efficient use of that resource. But we do want to keep our customers happy. Right? And maybe I'm going to make backups in the little Leo diamonds. So how many and where should Instagram put those servers so that you don't have to wait too long to upload a story or view a story? Well, this is a mathematical model to solve both of those problems. And this is one of those times where I really miss being live, if you will, right? Because somebody there in the audience is going to go, huh? Yeah, exactly. By the time you guys graduate from Georgia Tech, you will understand what this model is doing, what this mathematical model is doing, learn how to build this model, all of it, and interpret the results to be able to tell Ford which parts to put in which distribution centers and which quantities, or to be able to tell Instagram which servers to put in which of those blue squares and which quantities in order to satisfy their customers, okay? And I think the last example that I'm gonna talk about today is the Fast Pass at Walt Disney World. I think this picture is a little outdated because I think they do things a little differently now, but the idea behind the Fast Pass at Walt Disney World is that you would go to this particular ride, get a little ticket, or somehow an indicator that you should come back between 11.30 and 12.30. And when you return between those times, you get to go to the front of the line, right? Um, Walt Disney World and Universal Studios both have very large industrial engineering departments focused on customer satisfaction. Right, enhancing the customer experience. And your customer experience is enhanced, right? Because you don't have to wait in that long line for this particular popular ride in order to be able to ride it, right? You can go and do other stuff. Well, what you guys don't realize is that even though you're happy, 
by implementing this, they've smoothed out that demand for this ride over the course of the day, which makes it easier to maintain the equipment and for staffing. And also, you're not standing in that line waiting. You're also out in the park riding other rides, eating lunch, buying souvenirs, doing stuff, spending money that you wouldn't be doing if you were stuck waiting in this line also. So this was really a win-win for everybody. In fact, I know students who are both interned and have been hired by both Walt Disney World and Universal Studios. Uh, they are a very popular recruiter for us. Okay. So our rankings, I saw a quick question about that. Um, hopefully this will help to answer that question. Uh, our undergraduate program and our graduate programs are the best that they have ever been. Number one since the beginning of time and are the best programs ever in the history of the universe. Okay, so I'm a little facetious, a little sarcastic with that, but we're actually very proud of that number one ranking, both for our graduate and our undergraduate programs. What that means is you students are going to work really hard. Rather, we're going to work you really hard in order to maintain that number one ranking because we're actually pretty proud of it. And we should be too because it took us a long while to get here. And actually, it's important. I think it's more important that we are staying here even after all this time because everybody comes after number one, right? But the question that you guys have, and I think this might answer your question that you had on the chat a moment ago, what do you guys get from that number one ranking? Right? How does it benefit you, the student? Well, in two very distinct ways, right? Uh, the first thing is that number one ranking allows us to hire the brightest, sharpest people in our industry, right? We get to hire some of the up and coming uh, superstars, if you will, in, in industrial engineering, who get to teach you guys the neatest and coolest stuff uh, around industrial engineering. For example, we hired Dr. Swati Gupta out of uh, Massachusetts, I'll stumble over that word, out of MIT, all right? Um, she teaches a class on how we can use some artificial intelligence in order to help systems that are currently running in real time make better decisions. Not online learning decision making, right? Uh, we've also been able to hire Dr. Pascal Van Hattenrick, who is one of the pioneers in constraint programming, which is a relatively new area that solved that problem that I showed you guys earlier on. So that first benefit is that you get to learn some of the neatest, coolest techniques, processes, algorithms, industrial engineering stuff that there is out there. Now the second big benefit is that companies come to Georgia Tech to recruit you. Okay? As part of the career fair, well, every spring and fall, the Institute hosts an all majors career fair where the companies come to recruit you guys. But then around that same time, our student chapter of IISE, that Institute of Industrial Systems, the student chapter hosts an IE only career fair. This last time we had over 80 companies show up root industrial engineering students. So that's the second big benefit of having that number ranking, right? You get to learn the neatest, coolest stuff. Um, and when you graduate, companies want to hire you. They will almost compete for you. Which is kind of neat, right? It makes you feel kind of good. So, all right. I'm going to take a quick break and stop sharing and answer some of the questions that we might have on the chat there. Um, hopefully, I don't lock up home again. So, fingers crossed with that, right? So, da -da 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 -da, is it harder to go supply? I think we talked about that. 
a co-op opportunity. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you know that it's ranked number one. What do you think makes us stand out? What makes us stand out is we're awesome. No, um, we have small faculty and ratios. Uh, we have a very large alumni base. We have a lot of companies that come to us again to recruit you guys. Okay. Uh, Sharita says, what if you have IE specifically activities in high school? Are those activities put under review by IE faculty? I'm guessing you're asking that in the context of your application to be admitted. We, again, we don't see that you have even applied to Georgia Tech. Uh, so we don't know that you have gone through those IE specific activities as part of high school. Uh, da, 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 da. I can see and hear you. Thank you, Cole. And thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, Benjamin asked, does Georgia take, take into this? That's me not being able to talk. Sorry. Does Georgia Tech take into account STEM research experiences that don't have to do with IE? In terms of your application for admission, again, I don't know, to be honest. Um, the admissions group looks at the whole big picture of what you're doing. In terms of research experiences that don't have to do with IE, those can only benefit you in that IEs tend to be a little bit more interdisciplinary, right? We have to be able to work with the other people. So I'm getting here. Da, 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 so, blah, blah, blah. All right. so just to check the account. Okay, Anonymous. Anonymous wants to know, is it common for students at industrial at ISW to take classes in other engineering majors? Actually, yes, it is. Uh, you'll see in some future slides there, spoiler alert, that you actually have to take at least three classes from the other guys, so you have a little bit of a taste in what they do. Right? And then how involved was the IE department in COVID relief for Georgia Tech? Pretty involved. Uh, we've been doing some studies on how we can resupply different um, PPE needs in the different classrooms. Uh, we've been involved in looking at stimulations for how the disease would be spread or could be spread. That makes it sound like it was something we wanted to do, right? We don't want to do that. Uh, at the end of this, uh, there are some links to, I think, Instagram and our Twitter account where all of those different things are known. Again, the most efficient use of limited resources. So we will be involved if asked help with any distribution of vaccination. So one of the things that we did is we looked at what were the appropriate numbers of uh, students that we could have in classrooms in order to still maintain social distancing. What were the more efficient paths that could be taken around campus that we might want to make one way in order to also maintain some social distance. Uh, the, the Logan asks, is it common or encouraged for a student in a technical major like industry? Yes. I got some slides on that one. So, and can I explain some of the distances, differences between the IE concentrations? Yes, I have some slides on that one too. And is environmental and ethical sustainability part of the ISY program? I feel like I got to pay you guys for like setting me up for some of these things that I do have slides for. So um, send me your Venmo information. No, I'm teasing. Okay. And then what is transfer acceptance rate for IE? Uh, I do not know that. You would have to look on the website to be able to see what that is. Okay. Uh, there is some, uh, there are some pretty uh, strict requirements that you have to satisfy before you would accept uh, accept you as a transfer student. Yeah. Typically, it's you have to have at least taken physics, you have to have had taken your calculus classes, those sort of things. 
Uh, so will students have to take communications classes since IE must be able to communicate well with others? You have that choice. Uh, we don't force it on you because as you're going to hopefully see that there are so many different things that industrial engineering can do. It's one of those things that you're going to pick up as you go along. All right. Last one, and then we'll get back to the slides. The Georgia Tech offer classes that give certification to IE students like one you offered. Um, yes. So the student chapter of IASE hosts. Um, I just blanked on that. Hosts um, All right, folks. I'm just, um, I blanked on, uh, no, it's the Lean and Six Sigma uh, certifications through IIA. Apex does offer some stuff, or Apex does not as the world. So, uh, Catherine, I see your question. That's going to be answered in the slides, and I'm going to get back to you. All right. So, share my screen. Back to the slideshow. Fingers crossed. Okay, so some quick facts about our program. Uh, we started in 1924. Our first degree was granted in 1945. We originally started out as part of a mechanical engineering department. We are the largest IE program in the United States. It's a little bit under 1,500 graduates. But one out of every 10 new IE is from Georgia Tech. Like Three large alumni base, and then we are one of the more evenly split in terms of gender uh, of the engineering disciplines. Uh, traditionally, historically, I guess maybe it's a better word. Um, engineering has been a little bit more male dominated. Industrial engineering has always been more evenly split between males and females. And a lot of their, a lot of our graduates take their first job as a consultant or an analyst. Price Waterhouse Cooper hires you to represent them to tell another company what to do, and they feel good enough about our program. They understand that our curriculum is strong enough that they are able to hire you basically put on their t-shirt and have their business cards and go, for example, to Caterpillar and tell Caterpillar how to do their job better. So the curriculum, uh, this is where we'll get closer to that concentration question. The curriculum is that everybody's got to take these foundational courses, general curriculum. I actually call them the Jeopardy classes because these are the classes that are going to help you answer more than one category of jeopardy in the evenings, right? The humanities, English, economics, social science, those sorts of things. And regardless of what your major is at Georgia Tech, everybody's got to take the code. Good, well-rounded individuals, right? And then you'll start taking some of our core classes, some of our building block foundational courses, um, probability, statistics, stochastics, optimization, where you learn how to build and solve your mathematical model. Simulation, where you'll use a special piece of equipment to simulate uncertainty in the world. Uh, that simulation was a big part early on in the pandemic when Ergay Air was doing some simulations on how the COVID-19 was going to be spread. If you look for Turgay Air, A-Y-E-R, he did some simulations with some people at, I don't want to say at Harvard, uh, help show under different conditions how COVID-19 spread. Engineering econ, time value of money, and then regression, looking at blocks of data in order to be able to do some forecasting. Once you get some of the, once you get those core building blocks done, then you consider your concentration or your technical elective. And I'll talk about each one of them a little bit more. Everybody has to finish up with a senior design project. It's a hallmark of engineering programs. And this is where you'll work on a real problem for a real business 
gathering data, coming up with solutions, writing reports, presenting those solutions. The company will probably implement your ideas and make millions of dollars, and you get to graduate. Um, this all totals up to 128 hours. And the concentrations, those uh, sometimes are called tech collectives at other schools, right? And the idea behind the concentrations is it allows you to sort of focus your studies in one particular area. Okay? So we've got supply chain engineering, like I talked about earlier. That's our bread and butter, right? Um, getting the raw materials in, working them, getting them out. Economic and financial systems this is where you're helping investment firms and banks and financial companies manage their risk and make good decisions. Uh, quality and statistics is where you might want to look at different processes and help them improve the quality from a mathematical standpoint of their output or uh, quickly determine when the quality has decreased on your output. Analytics is our newest concentration. I think it's voodoo. I think it's black magic. Uh, but for example, you everybody's always collecting all of this data about us all the time. In fact, I think that's what's getting Google into trouble right now, right? And so analytics is going to look at all that and try to make some decisions or influence some future behavior, right? Uh, the example that I like to use is that I may be on my laptop looking for chainsaw blades for my little pole saw chainsaw. Um, let's just say Amazon on my laptop in the evening. And then the next day I'm scrolling through my phone, looking at Facebook and I see ads for chainsaw blades. And then I also see ads for first aid kits. So somebody looked at all of that data and drew a relationship, saw a relationship between people who buy chainsaw blades also end up buying tickets. So let's influence that behavior now. Let's try to entice that customer into going ahead and buying that first aid kit from us now instead of from somebody else later on down the road. Uh, that's what I think about. That's analytics, right? Uh, general, the general concentration is if you kind of want to build your own, right? And pick a little bit of everything if you want to. And then operations research is yeah, the, the tool maker, if you will, right? So all of those other guys will use different tools, different algorithms, different programs to answer those questions that they have within their arena. Well, operations research kind of works behind the scenes and making those tools work better or faster or give more appropriate answers, okay? Now, your concentration isn't on your diploma or your transcript, but it basically allows you to market yourself for those type of assistance, right? Um, not quite a minor, but in that uh, if you're going to apply for a supply chain job, you say, yeah, I concentrate in supply chain. Uh, you should hire me now because I understand supply chain inside, outside, upside down, left, right, backwards, forwards, and in a mirror. If you're applying for a supply chain job and you concentrate in something else, well, you're still at Georgia Tech IE. And that's kind of the big theme behind the concentrations that they definitely are going to help you get that first job in that area. But then when you go to apply for that second job, that company is going to look at the fact that you graduated from Georgia Tech and what you did in your first job. So um, it, the concentration really allows you to study areas that you might be really interested in or that you think you would like to work at. Okay? So senior design project locations uh, across the United States, across the world. Unfortunately, we do not send you to those other countries to work on those projects. You would have to do it virtually. And we probably need to update this too because I think we've had a project with somebody in Hawaii since this time. But there is a short list of some of the different companies with whom we have done.
on senior design projects for years. And then in real life, this would be the time when I would take a sip of my water as you guys review that list, right? Okay. And it's not just big corporations, right? We are very involved in the Serve, Learn, Sustain initiative that George Tech has. Uh, we've seen a senior design project with Relay Bike. You can say the word Relay Bike, Duncan Health in Atlanta. We worked with the Ladies Bend Stadium before the Super Bowl in helping them to improve their amount of recycling after big events. Uh, this last spring, <clears throat> we worked with the Land Humane Society to improve the adoption and non-return rate of pets. I'm going to off for a second here, so sorry. <coughs> <coughs> And dry up a little bit there. So, um, so we don't just I'm sure I say this right. We don't have to just help the WalMarts and the Bank of Americas and the Amazons make more money. The techniques, the methods, the processes, the material that you're going to learn as part of our program can also be applied to improving the human condition. To improving and making a life better for all of us. ID Labs at Georgia Tech. Uh, I think this is an old photo because I, I think that's a flip phone down there at the bottom. But we like to think that our labs are the real world, right? We don't have the traditional labs with Bunsen burners and scales and things like that. Up left there, we've got uh, stacks and stacks of books. It's probably an Amazon distribution center. Not many, well, you guys probably know that Amazon first started out just selling books and now has spread out into selling everything. So monitoring the financial networks there on the top right, uh, representative healthcare system in the middle, manufacturing cells in the bottom left, and I think that's Comic-Con down there in the bottom right, uh, the entertainment industry. So let's talk about internships and co-ops, which may answer one or two of the questions that we saw on there before. Um, what we do uh, at Georgia Tech is we stress three aspects of your time at Georgia Tech with us. The first one is obviously your education. Right, the, the classes. Uh, the second one is meaningful work experience, internships and co-ops. We strongly suggest that you try to get an internship, try to get a co-op, try to get some meaningful work experience during your time at Georgia Tech. Right? It's going to help you understand IE better. It's going to help you develop some of those professional and practical skills. You will get paid unless you choose to not get paid right? so there are some unpaid internships out there but generally you will get paid it's going to improve your job prospects right your, your resume is going to look better because you actually have some work experience now which is also going to generate a higher starting pay for you when you graduate and there is a difference between internships and co-ops right? the co-op is an actual program where you work for the same company and over a three semester rotation where you will go to school, work, school, work, school, work, work, and school, 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 right? You do three, you rotate, alternate between going to school and going to work. And when you do your three rotations, you're hopefully getting more progressive experience and responsibilities, right? You might have a small part on a project in your first rotation. You might have a larger part on a project in your second rotation. And in your third rotation, you might even be running. 
that one actually gets put on your diploma that you will graduate with your Bachelor of Science in Industrial Systems and Engineering with the co-op distinction. Internships are more flexible. Internships are one-off, one semester typically, where you might work for a company because you're not really sure that that's what you want. That may be all that they offer, right? So an internship is always a good opportunity to try something a little different that you might not be as sure about in terms of making that commitment that you would have to make for the co-op partner, right? You have to make that commitment of three semester rotation for the co-op partner. So it's kind of like, you know, right now, let's just go and get a cup of coffee to talk for the internship, whereas the co-op is going to be, yeah, I'm going to make the commitment to you that we're going to prom in the spring. Our Career Center uh, manages both of these programs. They do a very good job in helping to match you guys up with those companies. Right? They provide assistance in uh, fine-tuning your resume. They provide assistance in helping you come up with your elevator pitch. They will have mock interviews where they will ask you the questions that these Real interviewers will ask you guys and help you do a better job of presenting yourself, selling yourself to these different recruiters and these different companies. Uh, both the co op and the internships are free. Right? Uh, you will register for a class that you don't pay any fees for. You're not required to do these, but for example, if you were to start a co-op in the springtime, you would register for a co-op class, right? And I used uh, fake quotation marks there with my fingers. You'll register for this co-op class. You won't pay any fees. You won't pay tuition for it or anything like that. You're just going to be going to work instead of the classes for that semester. But then you do have the option, because you were registered for that class, of paying to stay in the dorms, or continue to pay to use the meal plan, or pay the fees to be able to go to a campus rec center uh, to work out or to swim or to do those sort of things. So uh, again, the co-op and internship programs are free. Uh, but you can pay the fees in order to continue to be able to use some of the services that you would have if you were in your normal school semester. Right? So we got work, we've got uh, the classroom experience, we've got the work experience, and then we have a study abroad experience. And that's the third aspect of your time at Georgia Tech that we really do stress. Okay? The world is becoming a smaller and smaller place all the time. And we've got a number of different programs through our Office of International Education, OIE, where you can go on a faculty-led study abroad program, which there are some that work real well with IE, that I'll talk about in a moment. Or you can even go on an exchange program, which is where you're kind of being a transfer student at a different school, or transient student, rather, at a different school, right? So instead of taking classes at Georgia Tech one semester, you might pretend to be at UC3M in Madrid, where you would take classes from them as if you were one of their one of their students, and then the next semester come back here. And there was even opportunities to get work experience while abroad also. So there are three programs that work real well for our industrial engineering program. GQ the Rain in the summertime offers a lot of classes, but there are at least two of them <clears throat> that are sophomore to junior-ish uh, building block foundational IE courses. We have an ISY Europe program that was supposed to start this last summer. So this coming summer will hopefully be, fingers crossed, will hopefully be the first time that we do that. But they're going to spend a five weeks in Dublin and then five weeks in Barcelona and take some classes that count towards your industrial engineering degree. And then we also have a nice way Asia program, which is more for 
say between your junior and senior year, where you'll take three of those concentration classes as part of that, where you're spending time in Singapore and Vietnam. And those fit in real well with the IE, but you're always open to looking at any of the other programs. There's an Oxford one, there's one for Pacific that takes you down to New Zealand and Australia. Uh, there are a lot of different study abroad programs available to everybody. It's just that the classes may end up being a free elective for you. We don't check off a degree requirement, but it's still a great opportunity to spend a whole semester somewhere else, essentially, right? All right, so let's talk about the typical journey as we start to wrap this up a little bit here, because I'm sure you guys have a lot more questions that you want to ask that I won't be able to answer. No, I'll try. I promise to try. But the typical journey is in your freshman year, you're going to work on some of those Jeopardy classes, right? Some of those ones that you have to take that make you a good, well-rounded person. Right? Calculus, English, the social science, and computer science classes. We use Python, so you'll learn how to use Python. And then in your spare time, if you have any, you're going to join some campus organizations, maybe join the student chapter of IISC. They are actually a very, very active chapter. Uh, you'll build your resume. You'll, in a non-COVID-19 world, you'll actually walk through some of those career fairs just to get a feel for it and not be overwhelmed when you actually go looking for a job later on. And then that first summer back home, you're going to start working on your resume, right? You're going to try and find some meaningful work or maybe even take some classes back home to be able to transfer back in. Then your second year, now you're going to start working on some of our foundation classes, that probability, that statistics, uh, discrete math, where it's not calculus anymore, right? uh, stochastics, uh, humanities, social sciences, and then your spare time there, you might want to be with a career advisor attend a resume blitz, apply to some of those co-ops or, or become a little more serious about reviewing those study abroad opportunities. And then in the summertime, are you going to do that study abroad? Are you going to start that co-op? Are you going to work that intern? In your junior year, you're going to start actually applying some of those foundational classes, that optimization simulation class I talked about earlier. You're going to choose your concentration. You can choose your concentration really any time. Um, there's engineering electives where you're going to take some classes from the other guys, maybe from civil, maybe from electrical, maybe from mechanical or material sciences, in order to get a taste of what they do at least. Right? Or maybe you might want to start working on a minor. Uh, minors will typically add five classes to your schedule uh, over the course of time. But again, it's one of those things kind of like your concentration, they will only help you uh, if you are going into that particular area, right? Um, I'll talk a little bit, I'm sure somebody will ask me this, but if I, if you don't, ask me what are some of the minors that uh, the industrial engineering students involved with. And then your spare times, you meet with the advisors, like me, you'll take a leadership position and some of those organizations that you joined earlier on, or maybe you'll participate in competitions. The idea really is now to start building that resume to make yourself more desirable to that company who wants to hire you for full time. One more time, study so abroad again or that co-op internship, right? that meaningful work experience. And then finally, in your senior year, you can see the end. Right? The finish line is just right over there. So you're going to finish up that concentration. You're going to finish up your minor. You might get involved in some undergraduate research. You're going to prepare and execute senior design. Actually, our senior design is a two semester process where the first semester you build your team and determine your project and get approval for it by putting together a project proposal. It basically says this is the company, this is what that company does, this is the problem that they presented to us, and this is how we're going to potentially fix that problem. And then the second semester, you actually do the work. Okay? And you're also going to apply and interview for those jobs, maybe think more seriously about grad school. 
and then finally that last summer you're gainfully employed you've gotten the job offer you moved out of mom and dad's house they the next day have contractors coming to measure stuff because they're putting in a home theater right that's kind of the idea right the idea is for you guys to graduate and get jobs right i'd like to think that you're coming to georgia tech because you want to learn the greatest and coolest stuff um, associated with industrial engineering and have your mind expanded right but then the other part of me says you're coming to georgia tech because you want to get a cool job after graduation making millions of dollars so that you can give some of that money back to georgia tech right all right so where do you want to go when you graduate again these are some of the companies that have hired industrial engineering leaders right we've got the consulting companies top left there logistics supply chain companies there in the middle additional manufacturing software companies retail bottom left corner there we've got our high-tech companies microsoft at&t google apple uh, we need to add spacex to that list and uber to that list uh, bank of america capital one our financial companies our entertainment with disney and universal studios food and services the oil companies, most efficient use of limited resources and even the federal government and state governments who really like to hire industrial engineers because again that limited that efficient use of limited resources right we want them to do better with the tax money that we pay right. and then this is my last full slide um, every graduating semester every spring and fall the, those students who graduate are surveyed and these are the results of the last three years uh, on the right hand side you can see the salary offers students from georgia tech get reasonable uh, starting salaries okay um, in fact i want to know who is that computer science student who's getting 130,000. that's like three times what i earned. i got a phd but what I think is important in the way that this is sorted is to look at that offer rate and that placement rate. And I think it's those two percentages that give a little bit of credibility to our three aspects, right? To those three things that we stress for you guys, education, work experience, and study abroad experience. Right? The offer rate is of those surveyed how many of them had received a job offer by the time of graduation? A, 90, a little less than 97% had received at least one job offer by the time of graduation. That placement rate, historically, we are at around 90% with that placement rate. Those are the students who had accepted a job by the time of graduation. So, I think that gives some, like I said, credibility that we're doing something right with respect to the classes, the work experience, and that study abroad experience. It's one of the jokes on campus that the other majors who you notice are all below us, the other engineers, right? Um, I say, oh, IE, yeah, it's imaginary engineering. Actually, that's kind of, that's kind of a compliment, right? Because we do get to use our imagination. We do get to use some of our creative juices, if you will. Um, but then IE could also stand for simply employed. Right? When you graduate from Georgia Tech with your industrial engineering degree, you're going to get a job, all right? And to be honest, that's really kind of what I think we're looking at, okay? So I'll leave this up here for a moment. It's got our social media uh, links there uh, where you can go and look at 
um, some of those media stories over the last six months or so, and how we have worked in trying to influence our responses to the pandemic. I'll leave this up for just a moment, but then I'll stop sharing and then we'll go and see if we can answer a couple more questions for you guys. All right. I'm to cover my voice while we're doing that. This doesn't really help if I keep talking. All right, so taking this down in five, four, Three, two, one. I want to stop sharing. Switch back over to Chrome and start looking at the Q and A. The questions that you guys may have had that you've put out there. So, um, Catherine, the last thing I looked at there was your question on what kind of study abroad programs does ISY offer. I answered that one, right? Elite, Felipe, Felipe. I say your name wrong, I'm sorry, okay. Um, do ISYE students usually double major or minor in another subject? Great question. Uh, double majoring is tough. Double major, you have to get 36 hours and the other major that's completely unique to that other major. You can stay at Georgia Tech as long as you want. You know, you can continue to take classes as long as you haven't taken all the classes yet. Um, Students double major in computer science. Some students try to double major in a uh, management class, business administration class. Uh, we had one student be a triple major in math, industrial engineering, and physics. So you can double major in whatever you want. Most of the majors will say, though, that you have to almost finish your first major before they'll let you start your second. Because they want to make sure that you actually finish at least one of them. If you come into Georgia Tech starting out as a double major in, let's just say, physics and industry, you're going to bounce between the two of them. Um, and then all of a sudden, something's going to change, and now you need to stop going to school or you need to finish up and you don't have enough for either one of them. So most of the other majors prefer that you get close to finishing your first one, or they let you add a second one. So, so you could say you could be a double major, you could be a triple major, stay as long as you want, right? Um, as far as the minors, yeah, um, a lot of students take a minor. It's kind of like an extension of the concentration, if you will, and that you should minor, you should study something that you want to study. Um, the minor is only going to help you. Nobody has been denied a job because they had a minor in something. Nobody's going to say, you you got a minor in CS, yes, so we're not going to hire you. No, no, that doesn't happen. Uh, it's not a requirement that you have a minor in order to get a job either. So get a minor in something that you're interested in, right? A lot of industrial engineering students go to CS to try and get a minor from them. Uh, again, it's not necessary. Uh, some of them try to go to what we call Scheller, that's the name of our business school, where they have a competitive technology and management minor, where you get a little bit more of the, the softer of the subjects. Um, which they would even call soccer subjects like human resources and sales and marketing, things like that. Uh, the math based, the quantitative based classes are typically called harder classes. And then we're talking about um, hard, like your head versus hard, like your head. Um, but I've known students to minor in music, to minor in a language, to minor in health systems or environmental engineering. There are, there are a lot of opportunities to enhance your degree with that minor, which is going to help you when you go to look for a job in that particular area, right? But again, kind of like the concentration, at the end of the day, you're still 
going to be a Georgia Tech IE, which is going to kind of dominate all those other things anyway. All right. So what are the benefits of pursuing a BSMS and IE slash supply chain? Yeah, I'm frozen. Um, so the benefits are that you, one, don't have to take the GRE, Graduate Record Examination, I think is what it stands for, but the GRE is kind of like the SAT or the ACT on steroids. Right? What a lot of schools use, either the GRE or the GMAT, the business schools, use to help gauge how you will be successful in grad school. So if you do the BSMS program and IE and supply chain engineering, you don't have to take the GRE. And you will take three master's level classes while you're still a bachelor, which is cheaper. And then you can double count some of those classes for both your bachelor's degree and your master's degree. For example, when you take the master's optimization level class, which will satisfy one of your concentration requirements. And then also after you graduate and start in the master's program, you've already got that class satisfied as part of your master's program. So it can help to reduce the amount of time that you would spend in the master's program by, and usually at least by one semester. And then earning a master's degree in industrial insurance, supply chain, research your master's degree is always going to dominate your resume um, over the bachelor's degree just like a bachelor's degree will dominate your high school degree right. uh, da, 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 what advice would you give to ie transfer students math is our friend you if you come in as an undergraduate, if you come in not to transfer as a first year freshman, right, you're going to have to take at least five math classes. Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, linear algebra, and then that discrete math. Okay. And then you're going to use those in the probability and the statistics and the optimization and the stochastics and the simulation and engineering econ classes. So, uh, industrial engineering, engineering in general, is the application of math to real world problems. Industrial engineering is the application of math and the scientific method to business problems. So the math is really important to get good grades in them, and it's really important to get that good, strong foundation. Okay. Does Georgia Tech offer MATLAB classes? Yes, but we industrial engineers don't use it. Uh, there are some CS classes that can use MATLAB. I want to say that some of those other engineering people use MATLAB. No, we end up using Python. So we do offer MATLAB. We do. There's some Java classes. There's some C. And C++ class is offered by computer science. Uh, we don't have a class in Excel and Visual Basic, uh, but I teach a workshop on Visual Basic for Excel, um, which actually is used, can be used pretty extensively in the business course too. So, um, our MATLAB is not, not our primary choice, if you will. Okay, Ariana? And so then if you majored in IE and wanted to later attend a graduate program, would it also have to be an IE? No. But but why would you go somewhere else? No, it's easy. So you don't have to go to a graduate program in industrial engineering. Now it's up to that graduate program to decide whether they will accept you or not. But I've known students who got their bachelor's in industrial engineering and went on and an MBA program, right? A uh, master in business administration program in order to get a little bit of that bigger view of the whole business. I've known students who want to get a master's in operations research, which is like one of our subsets. 
and get a master's in this one there, right? Or supply chain as the other person I asked about. Yeah. Or I've even known a student who got his bachelor's in industrial engineering and then went and got a master's in mechanical engineering because that's what he wanted to do. So, but it's up to the other program to uh, decide whether or not they would accept you or not to, to look at your transcript and see if you've had the appropriate um, foundation for their particular program. Right? Uh, there are lots of students who will either get a master's in industrial engineering or will go into an MBA program in order to get that bigger picture of a business. Um, but it's also not a requirement to go on to get a graduate level degree. And then if doing a co-op during senior spring semester, how would completing senior design work? You would not be able to do your co-op and your senior design at the same time. Okay? Um, senior design, the last class of senior design, where you're actually doing the work, we actually suggest that you take that class with as little other classes as possible, right? But it is a residential, it is a, you cannot be doing a co-op, you cannot be doing an internship while you're also doing the second part of the senior design. The first part of the senior design that I talked about, how was a two semester process, right? The first part is that zero credit, zero cost class that you can take while you're working, while you're abroad, while you're in an internship as long as you can effectively communicate with the rest of the people in your project. So you would not be able, you could finish your co-op while you're doing that first part, the preparation for senior design, but the actual senior design itself, trust me, you do not want to be working. You want to be putting all of your time and effort into that senior design project because it takes a lot more time than the four hours for the senior design. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. I'm hoping this has been helpful for you guys. I hope that uh, you've gotten some good information out of it. Um, I'll wait one more minute to see if somebody else has one last question. But you saw my contact information there on the screen. You saw the social media links there. Feel free to look around. Feel free to browse our website, right? Uh, unfortunately, you guys can't come to campus and walk around and, and get a tour. Hopefully, this all will pass over the course. Of right? and I hope I've answered everybody's question. If I missed a question or if I didn't answer your question, please ask it again. Um, but I'm going to wait here a moment or so and then and you out, right? Time to go on to other things. And yes, I actually do teach, for those of you who are curious, I do teach classes. Um, I'm an advisor in um, H. Milton Stewart School of Industrial Engineering, but then I also teach an engineering econ class, and I teach the, one of the simulation classes. So I got my bachelor's and Management Science, which is sort of the business version of industrial engineering from Georgia Tech a long time ago. I got my master's in industrial engineering from the University of Florida, and my PhD in, in industrial engineering from Clemson University. So I'm glad, you're very welcome, both of you guys. Thank you very much for your comments, for that, for the thank yous. You, you guys are welcome. I want to see you guys come here, right? I think we got a great program. I hope that comes across as part of the presentation. We've got some really exciting opportunities available to you guys. So we like to see it come to fruition. There's an unpaid endorsement, right? I don't get paid anything for you guys coming here. Like I said, I don't even know you're coming until you show up. All right. Let's see more. Uh, you guys are welcome. All right. So, not seeing any more questions. I don't want to say we've gone over, but I want to make sure you guys uh, get the information that you need.
that I think that you have. So I hope you all have great evenings, great afternoons. Uh, please stay safe. Please follow the guidelines and the policies of your local areas. And when you do come to Georgia Tech, stop by and see me, okay? And we'll stop the broadcast, and then I think I'm going to have to click on the exit to kick you guys out of here, all right? So stay safe, everybody, okay?